up, Smashers? We're going to go for round two today. We got, uh, we got some more shoulder stuff to go on, but another part of it is, and I realize we got the sun here. Let's see if I can block that. I just gotta, we're just going to deal with it. Pretend it's a nice sunny day, because it is a nice sunny day. It's California. But we're going to get in under here, and we're going to separate that serratus, which is doing that scapular, uh, that scapular retraction. It's pulling that, pulling that scapula, actually, sorry, protraction. It's pulling that scapula out. So what we want to do is we want to be able to peel that serratus away. And so think about this. The reason I'm bringing this up is because if you're going to get into a ring dip or a muscle up and your catch is way up here, which is where it's going to be on the strict ones coming up, by the way, you want to be able to have that range of motion, that full protraction, full retraction, so the shoulder moves the way it's supposed to and it's stable. Otherwise, you're going to get this pinch across the front of the shoulder. This light is driving me completely bonkers. Let's see if we can get it better. Nah, no improvement. All right, so, hey, it's like I have the... It's like one of those one of those halos you see that, you know, in the movies, that kind of stuff. I don't know, it's noon, I haven't eaten yet. So, we're gonna peel away the serratus, we're gonna open up that shoulder, we're gonna allow it to bring that shoulder back into the proper position. Then we're gonna take the head of that humerus and we're gonna shove it into the back of the socket. Remember, the head of the humerus in the uh, in the glenoid fossa, in that, in that socket, its most stable point is where? In the back, so when you're like this, that's unstable when it's sucked into the back of that scapula or in the back of that socket, back of that joint, and wound up really tight. Those fibers tighten up and it sucks that joint into place and makes it super, super strong. Same thing with the hip, right? External rotation winds up those fibers. That's really important to understand because when we're doing all these movements, we're going through all these, uh, all these movements really, really fast. You want to stay as stable as possible so you don't lose that and that's when injury happens. That's when you gas yourself out because you start using and recruiting a bunch of other stuff to help you get through the movement when in reality you don't really need to do that. When you're super efficient with your movement, look at a guy like Froning. You know, he's, he's as smooth and efficient as it gets. It's ridiculous to watch that guy. Guy does overhead squats like this. I can't even, it just hurts me just to even try. Froning, you're a badass. Although Pat Barber said you're a pussy, That's, that is true. And that was pretty funny because you guys know each other. I think that's hilarious. So anyway, we're gonna peel away the long head of that bicep tendon. We're gonna peel away the short head of that bicep tendon because they're gonna drag that shoulder inward. Then we're gonna take that, that serratus, that uh, lat, that teres, that subscap. We're gonna peel those apart. We're gonna open up the pecs too. I'm gonna show you what to do on the rings so we can really get that stable. And then I'm gonna take the uh, kettlebell, which you can't see back there, it's blocked by the sun. And we're gonna have that, shove that right back into the back, shove the uh, humerus right back into the socket and get things super stable so the shoulders, well, they work, right? So first one is, just grab a bar. You can see where I am. You're gonna make sure it's about mid-thigh. So depending on your mobility, but what you wanna do is you wanna get up against it like this. Okay, super, super easy. All you're gonna do is take a knee. Arms locked out, chest up real high. So what happens is, this is how a lot of guys are doing it. I've gotten pictures. I love it, by the way. You can, are you smash worthy? That's what we're gonna start, a new hashtag. Smash worthy. Send me pictures of uh, all the smashing you're doing. But you're, you're in this position, don't do that. The higher up you go, the more you're gonna peel away that long head of the bicep. Trust me, right now, this is probably the most abysmal feeling on earth because it feels like I'm separating my shoulder. But you wanna hang out like this for how long? Two minutes. Yeah, it's two minutes, you got it. That's number one. Number two is get up against the bar. This one's super cool. I just did this one with uh, Sandra Pacelli, by the way, this morning. That's why it's so important because she brought up something that I didn't even think about when she was getting into the, uh, the top of a strict muscle up in the catch. And, uh, and she was having some a little bit of pain in here and I thought, holy geez, never thought about that. So we're gonna help all you guys out. Second one is tuck the hands in really close. So almost where the knurling stops, you're gonna bring your arms, see how I'm bent now? Same thing, this is so much worse. And you're gonna bring your back all the way up against the, oh, this is just horrendous. And you're gonna hang out like this. So now the arms are bent. I'm hitting a lot more of that serratus and that lat and that whole tie-in area underneath the arm. So I'm gonna take the right one away just so you can see. But I'm gonna hit all this stuff in here, right where that lat and that serratus tie in on the ribs. So we wanna get into that position. Start off like this, keep the arms bent, back all the way up against the bar, squeeze the elbows together as if you're trying to pinch a beach ball behind you, and then just hang out here for how long? Yeah, it's two minutes, you know the routine. That's number two. Oh, that's just, I feel like I just did rope climbs for like a half an hour. Number three is check this one out. This one's pretty, we gotta fix this lighting here. Huh? How about we just do this? Now you just get to see my hand. Don't worry, I'm coming back. 
kettlebell. We want to take the kettlebell, provided, by the way, there's a, uh, a bar here. So if you hear a big bang, it's because I just took it right in the noodle. Feel free to laugh, totally okay. If you can't laugh at yourself, man, and trust me, somebody else is. So you want to just laugh. So we're going to take this, and we're just going to bring it up overhead, and then we're going to wind it up. So I want you to look at my elbow because I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the kettlebell. I'll try and get as close as I can to this. But you're gonna take this so we can see there's the kettlebell. I'm wound up, I'm all fully externally rotated and I'm blocking the arm and I'm letting the shoulder get shoved right into the, uh, into the floor. So you're just gonna hang out here for how long? Two, three, four minutes, as long as you can humanly take it. This is only a 35. I would use a 44 or 53 if I were you. I have one of my friends, he uses a 70 really just crank that right in there he's a muscular son of a gun though so that's why so you're gonna hang out here for how long yeah you're gonna hang out here for at least two three minutes when you're done just dump it don't try and save it that joint's nice and stable now so we want to keep it that way last one i want to show you though is on the rings this one's super important good we'll get this out of the way why don't you come with me good so you can see you got a set of rings hanging out there but they're super low so i'm going to move this so we can see the rings. Hey, mad camera skills, right? Good. So you see the rings? I realize the bar's in the way. Why don't we just do this? I realize that 35 pound bar is probably crushingly heavy for me. And we're gonna get in the rings. So this is where you may as well, remember, train like you fight and fight like you train, right? So we're gonna do exactly what you're gonna be doing in the rings. So you're gonna take a knee forward. This isn't what you're doing in the rings though, by the way, not the knee part. So you're gonna take the rings. We wanna externally rotate, right, 11 and one. That's how we wanna finish if we can, because it's the most stable, so it's gonna put almost no stress on the shoulder in comparison to finishing like this where it's super, super unstable and the elbows wanna chicken wing out. When you wind them up, look what happens. I wind them up, I even come up. So you're gonna take a knee, same thing that we did with the, uh, with the barbell, except this time now I'm in the, I'm in the rings. We wanna be up as high as we can, and same thing, squeezing that beach ball behind us, and you're gonna hang out like this for how long? Two minutes. When you're done, lean forward, okay? And if you can, this is the one where you wanna, I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna jack up my shoulder even more, but you wanna stay externally rotated, and you wanna press your way, I'm gonna use my legs to press out, but you wanna press your way out of it into that finishing position so you know exactly what it feels like. So you've done it, remember, repetition is the mother of skill, so you've done it a ton of times, so you know what it feels like here on the ground, you'll know what it feels like there up in the air. Super easy, right? So that's gonna peel away that pec, separate that the, uh, the serratus, the teres, open up that shoulder and suck it into the back of the joint, make it super duper stable. By the way, Sarah, video number two, do your homework. Hey, I'm Trav Smashworks, talk to you guys tomorrow, have a great day.